adult stem cells to support the body's natural renewal system is poised to become one of the breakthrough discoveries of our time. To help understand the mystery of how stem cells and patented stem enhance work to create natural well-being is Stemtech's Chief Science Officer, Christian Japo. As a leading authority on stem cell research and the co-inventor of Stem Enhance, Christian's ability to bring this complex science into clear focus has thrilled audiences around the world. Now get ready as Christian Drapeau unlocks the secret of the adult stem cell phenomenon. Thanks for being here. It's a real, real pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Real, real pleasure to be here. Thank you for coming. What would you say if I were to tell you that there's a cell in the body that can travel, go to different organs, and become cells of a different organ. Now you've heard that message a little bit through stem tech, so it may not look that amazing. It's like a building block of the body. It's like a brick in a house. What if I were to tell you, you know, you have a, house, a brick that will make the foundation, the wall, uh, the, the sidewalk, the garage, uh, the, the storage unit. What if I were to tell you, I have a brick here, that if I have a problem with the sidewalk, I just put it there, it becomes the sidewalk. Or I put it in the foundation, it becomes the foundation. I have a problem in the garage, I put it in the garage wall, it becomes a garage wall. I break a window, I put it in the window, the brick becomes a window. Wouldn't it look a little bit like fiction? I mean, it, we would laugh at this whole concept. And yet, that is exactly what we have with stem cells. We have a stem cell that leaves the bone marrow, goes into a tissue and becomes cells of that tissue. It is of such a magnitude that I think oftentimes we don't fully grasp here what it is that science has discovered. Uh, and the magnitude of this is such that it was actually linked to the 2008 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. The Nobel Prize was attributed in 2008 to a small protein called green fluorescent protein. The development of the protein uh, and also its use in medicine and in medical research. What is green fluorescent protein? It's a small protein. A protein is so small that it's invisible to most microscopes. So you have this very, very small molecule virtually invisible and if you put ultraviolet light on it it starts to glow so what was invisible suddenly becomes visible so you have a few of these proteins somewhere in, in a place and you put the light on it ultraviolet light and suddenly you start to see it it's a little bit like how did we discover the migratory patterns of whales I know it's kind of far on the left, like different topic, but how did we do this? We, we put tracking device on whales and suddenly we discovered, you know what, they migrate in places that we never expected and they go at depths that we never expected. It is exactly the same thing here. GFP, green fluorescent protein, is a tracking device. The moment you put it in a cell, just like the brick or the whale that you track and suddenly you realize, my goodness, it's going way deeper than I ever thought. You put that tracking device in a stem cell and you realize, I have a liver cell that has that light in it. So that liver cell was a stem cell before. It's the same phenomenon, the same tracking phenomenon. That's what green fluorescent is about. It allowed so many breakthroughs in health and wellness and in medicine. And, and that's how the whole process here, the whole concept of stem cells was discovered, what they're doing in the body. We've discovered that stem cells can leave the bone marrow travel to different organs and, and become cells of a different organ. This is huge. This is called to change the way that we look at wellness, the, the way that we look at health. It's going to bring a paradigm shift in this whole industry of health and wellness. How is it going to do this? When we started with this whole field and studying you know, what became stem and hence, we did not know all of this. We were early on and all of this was discovered as we went along. So we did not one day decide or realize stem cells is something that is really powerful, really interesting. Let's be the, fir let's be the first one tapping into this whole concept. This is not how it happened. It happened when I started to study a plant, an aquatic botanical called Aphanizomenon plus aqua. So let's call it AFA in short. I started to, to study AFA and try to understand what was the mechanism of action behind its benefits. It was bringing a lot of benefits to people. People reported benefits uh, touching the skin, better skin, better liver function, better pancreatic function, better cardiac function, cardiovascular function, brain function. What was really impressive and a mystery to us was the, the wide variety of these benefits. If a stem cell can become a cell of the brain or a cell of the heart, how could it be that, just, that this would just be some sort of a, 
an interesting observation without a meaning. It's a little bit like you discover a seed, a little thing that you have in your hand, you put it in the ground, and it looks like a piece of dust, and suddenly you get a tree coming out of it. And the conclusion would be, oh, how interesting. And you just walk away without more thought. I mean, it will be unthinkable. It's a little bit the same thing. Here we see, wait a minute, a cell from the bone marrow can become a brain cell, a heart cell, and a liver cell? Why not a skin cell, a pancreatic cell, a bone cell, a, and every other cells of the body? If they can become a brain cell, most likely they can become everything. So we proposed, we published in the scientific literature, the proposal that stem cells from the bone marrow constitute the natural renewal system of the body. It was an idea eight years ago. And now during those eight years, data was filled in, a lot of studies were published, I'm talking hundreds, hundreds of studies, basically confirming this whole concept, stem cells do constitute the natural renewal system. Based on this idea, we went in the lab and we looked at the effect of AFA on stem cells. Before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about what are stem cells, to understand uh, the topic here. Stem cells are cells that are immortal and primitive. What does that mean? Immortal means that they will multiply endlessly. The stem cells in your bone marrow started the day that you were one cell in the tummy of your mother. That's where it started. And then it grew, they multiplied, they multiplied, and some of them stayed in the bone marrow, and they will continue to multiply until your last day. So they multiply like this, I say endlessly, but in your life, they simply continue to multiply during your entire life, contrary to any other cell in the body. They are primitive in the sense that they are nothing. They are nothing in the sense that they are, they are not specialized, but they have the ability of becoming anything. Do you understand what that means? Let's compare them to what is not a stem cell. A cell of your skin, a cell of your muscle, your brain, your heart, the retina, the liver, the pancreas. A cell of your pancreas, for example, will make insulin. That's the only thing it will do. It will not contract like a muscle cell. It will not think like a brain cell. It's not going to beat like a heart cell. It's, it's, a, it's a pancreatic cell. A cell of your skin is not going to, if you go to the gym and you start to work out and you need more muscle cells, a cell of your skin is not going to think, you know, gee, let's go and help that muscle below and sink in the tissue and become a muscle cell. It's not going to happen. They are specialized. They do one thing. They do not multiply. At the other end of the spectrum, I have stem cells. They have the ability to become anything and to multiply. That's what they are. They're fine essentially in two places in nature. The first place is in the embryo. What we're talking about here is called the blastula. It is the very, very early embryo, 8 to 10 days old embryo. It is just 100 to 200 cells. And it is possible to extract the cells that are in this embryo that you see here in yellow. It's possible to extract, it's called the inner cell mass. It's possible to extract cells from this part of the embryo and to grow them in a test tube. Now these cells are not all stem cells in that area. So you extract a bunch of them and you start to grow them. They will proliferate very easily, which is one of the characteristics of embryonic stem cells. But what is a key issue here or a key characteristic of embryonic stem cells, which has become the test to identify if a cell is a stem cell, when I, when I extract one of these cells from this embryo, the blastula, and I grow them, to demonstrate that it is a stem cell, I inject it under the skin and I get what is called a teratoma. A teratoma is a tumor where I have a few teeth, uh, a piece of liver, a piece of stomach, intestine tissue, I even have uh, what looks like a toupee, <laughs> uh, everything. So it's telling me that the cell that I injected had the ability to, to multiply, it went from one cell to a slump of tissue, but also it had the ability to become teeth, liver cells, heart cells, brain cells, functional cells, totally disorganized. It's a tumor, but it tells me this cell has an amazing potential. Now, keep that in mind because we'll come back to that. Now, the other place where you get stem cells is in the bone marrow, adult stem cells. Adult stem cells are from the bone marrow, though they can migrate in the blood, so they're easy to isolate from the blood, or as a matter of fact, we know today, from almost any tissue. You've heard that in the news. You can get it from the skin, from fat tissue. They're everywhere in the body, but they all come at the origin from the bone marrow. Okay, you, inject, you look at them in a test tube, you try to grow them, they do not grow very easily. And if you inject them in the skin, they do not give you a teratoma. What was discovered is that in the body, not in a test tube, in the body, stem cells do proliferate just as well as embryonic stem cells, and they become any cells of any tissue, but the tissue where they...